house is called the Big House by the Community. It was built by Jeremiah Jenks. Following the fire of 1871, he moved his family and his business and built this house that was finished in about 1873. I'm Barbara McGowan. I'm the curator and a docent at the Frank Murphy Memorial Museum. Um, I'm a member of the Friends of Murphy Museum. Our mission is to present the life and times of Frank Murphy and to maintain the museum and all of its contents. This is a newspaper article in, in which uh, Frank Murphy is found to have made the right decision by allowing the strike to continue and it turns out that it was an important beginning for the uh, United Auto Workers and many other unions that followed the footsteps of this uh, negotiation. There is a large collection of books in all of the buildings. We do have a bibliography of the books. Many of them are first editions signed by the author. The dining room table is distinctive. The top of the table is one slice of Philippine mahogany. It gives you an idea of the size of the trunk of this tree. It's actually in two parts. The bottom is the pedestal. is also Philippine mahogany in it, and it is carved. You'll note that on the top of the table, Marguerite Murphy Tian's name is carved. While this seems uh, to be a destructive, it was typical of well-to-do Filipinos. If they owned it, they put their name on it. These chandeliers uh, were collected by the Murphy family. They are placed in rooms where you would not ordinarily see a crystal chandelier. I cannot be sure if the one in the dining room is from the Philippines. The one in the parlor, we know, did come from the palace in Manila. The family, along with crystal chandeliers, collected crucifixes. You will find one in every room in the house, even in the pantry. The model of the airplane came to us from one of our members, and it is uh, signed by Henry Ford to Frank Murphy. This room is dedicated to George Murphy, the, the youngest of the Murphy children, um, kind of got lost in the shuffle. He was a pilot in the Navy during World War I, very innovative. In this room we have a picture and the propeller from the plane that he flew. He became a judge and during World War II he was very instrumental in dealing with Japanese prisoners of war and bringing war criminals to court to be held responsible for the massacre at Wake Island. In this room, this was Marguerite's room. Fortunately, Marguerite loved fancy dresses and fortunately the Murphys saved everything. We found all of these beautiful gowns tailor-made for Marguerite in a trunk and we keep them on display. These turnos were made in several parts with a variety of materials. If you'll note, uh, this very heavy satin and the penuela across the chest and the butterfly sleeves are made uh, from a very picky, stiff material. It has to have been very hot. Frank Murphy died 
1949, uh, that gave him uh, nine years uh, as Supreme Court Justice. While he was Supreme Court Justice, he wrote many um, important documents. Uh, one of the most famous uh, was his dissenting opinion of the Karamatsu versus United States case in which uh, a member of Mr. Karamatsu sued the United States and went all the way to the Supreme Court. He claimed that the relocation of Japanese Americans from the West Coast was unconstitutional and seizing their homes and businesses without remuneration was also unconstitutional. The Supreme Court ruled in favor of the United States. Uh, Frank Murphy wrote the dissenting opinion, uh, and many years later, the government of the United States um, recognized their uh, violation of the Constitution and did reimburse uh, the descendants of those Japanese Americans.